Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning about the patch tool in Photoshop. The patch tool is located over here and its shortcut is J. First, I'm going to show you the basic function of the patch tool and then I'm going to delve into the details. Suppose I don't want this flower over here. I want this orange background. So to remove the flower, I'll use the patch tool. The patch tool almost works like a selection tool. So I'll click over here and circle around the flower. And then I'll release the mouse so the selection closes itself. Since I want this area to look like this, I'll have to drag the selection over here. So I'll do that. It's giving us a preview of how it's gonna look. I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm gonna release the mouse button. And the last thing left to be done is to deselect this selection, which is Ctrl plus D. The flower is gone, as if it was never there in the first place. We'll now learn the patch tool in detail, so here's the patch mode. There are two patch modes, normal and content aware. The very first thing to discuss about the normal patch mode is that you always need to select the mesh layer or its duplicate to make it work. So we have the mesh layer over here and this is just an empty layer. I'm going to select the empty layer and try out the patch tool. Let's remove this flower. So I'm going to click and circle around. So far it's fine, but when I try to track, it won't work. It's showing an error for which I'm going to click OK and then deselect. This time let's go ahead and select the mesh layer, but you can always duplicate the mesh layer and then work on that. Take my patch tool and then make a selection around the flower. And then we drag. So it works. The normal patch mode has its own set of properties. And first we are going to look at source. Suppose I don't want this flower, so I'll do the usual drill. I'll make a selection around this flower. Next, Photoshop will ask when you will track the selection, what will you be looking for? I'll say I'm looking for a source over here, which I can use to fill up this selection. So I'm going to start dragging and as I'm dragging, I'm hunting for a source. Right now, this region acts as a source for me, but anytime you can change your mind and let's say have this region as the source or maybe this flower. And each time you can see the preview over here. I'll just go back to my old orange background as the source. Hit Ctrl and D for deselection. Next, we are going to explore the destination property for the normal patch mode. This region over here looks quite empty to me, so I might just want to replenish it with some flowers. Let's take this flower over here. We'll make our usual selection around it. And then Photoshop is going to ask you the same question again, that when you track the selection, what will you be looking for? And the answer will be destination, because the selection now is looking for a destination to go to. So let's see what that means. I'm going to click on the selection and then drag it to a place or destination of my liking, like maybe here, or maybe here, or maybe even on top of this flower. But let's just place it over here for now. And finally, we deselect the selection. Next, I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to select blocky objects. Like for selecting this thing over here, instead of going freeform with the selection, you can use this tip. I'm going to press and hold Alt on my keyboard, then click on this corner, then click down here, then over here, here, and finally release the Alt key so it closes the selection. So you can also select objects in this way without hand drawing the selection. Next, we are going to explore this transparent option. First, let's study the option when it's unchecked. Since we have a selection already, I'm just going to drag it. So nothing unusual in the result. It has just picked the source from here and filled the selection. I'm going to go back and then turn on the transparent option. The transparent option lets you see the texture of both the selection as well as the source. Well, let me show you. With the selection already there, I'm just going to click and drag the selection towards the source. And then when I let go of the mouse, you get this outcome. So simultaneously, we can see the texture of the window as well as that of the bricks of the house. For the next option, I'm going to use this example and then I'm going to make a quick selection over here. But this time, instead of dragging the selection anywhere, I'm going to use Pattern. I'll click on the drop down. We have a bunch of patterns to choose from. I'll expand 3. 
and select this. But nothing will happen until and unless I click on this button to use the pattern we just selected. So let's do that and see what we get. The pattern is reddish over here, but if we have the selection here instead, it's gonna be green. We are gonna look at the next property of the normal patch mode, which is diffusion. First, we're gonna use the least diffusion, which is one. Let's make a selection around this window. And then let's see what happens when I track the selection on the wall. And last, we deselect the selection. So you see, with the least diffusion of one, the rim doesn't quite mix or blend with the wall. Let's undo this. And this time I'm gonna bump up the diffusion to its highest value, which is seven. I'm gonna drag the selection again. Let go of my mouse and then Control plus D. So the blend this time with the high diffusion is seamless. You can hardly tell if there was any patchwork done here. So this was with the least diffusion of one and this with the highest diffusion of seven. In this example, I want to show you the basic difference between normal patch mode and content aware patch mode. Let's say I want to get rid of this mark on this mic. First, I'm going to close in on this so we can see better. And then we'll start with the normal patch mode. I'll keep the diffusion at its highest so we get the best blending. And then we select the thing. Then I'm going to drag it over here and deselect it. But at this point you might be thinking, why am I being so stupid as to drag the selection over here and not here? Because dragging the selection over here would make more sense, right? They both have the same highlighted texture and no doubt it would have been much easier to blend. But I'm doing this way to show you the basic difference between the normal patch mode and the content aware patch mode, so please bear with me. With the normal patch mode, you can very well see that we get this nasty blotch because it couldn't recognize that we needed a highlight over here. Now I'm going to undo this and try out the content aware patch mode. Since we have already got the selection, let's drag it to the right again. Hit Ctrl plus D to deselect. And now we get a perfect patch. So the content aware patch mode, as the name suggests, is aware of the content. It was aware of the fact that the mark was on a highlighted region, so as a result, it gave us a highlight. So this was with our normal patch mode and this with our content aware patch mode. Now the content aware patch mode has its own set of properties. The first one is structure. Its least value is one and highest is seven, which is what we are gonna use first. Suppose I want to get rid of this parachute and want to get a clear picture of the mountain. So I'm gonna select the parachute. And it's worth mentioning now that although content aware has no source or destination option like the normal patch mode, it always uses source as a default option. So as I'm tracking the selection, I'm essentially looking for a source in the mountains. Another thing that I want to quickly go over is that instead of deselecting the selection, you can also hide the selection. And the command for that is Ctrl plus H. The selection is still there. It's just hidden. So if we press Ctrl plus H again, it comes back, but I will hide it. Now with structure set at its maximum value, we can notice two things. The contour of the patch is very rigidly apparent and it strictly adheres to the boundary of the selection we made. And secondly, the pixels within the patch doesn't match with the pixels surrounding it. For example, this part of the mountain within the patch doesn't go with this at all. So with the selection which is still there but is hidden, let's try reducing the structure. And immediately you can see that the contour is much less harsher now and it has also contracted itself from the selection mounts. Secondly, the patch really blends or meshes well with the surrounding. You can really see the effort to blend this with this. And to review this, this was with the highest structure and this with the least. For the next property, which is color, I can explain this better if I pump up the structure value. Now the color property basically lets you mix or match the color of the patch with the surrounding. By that I mean that this region should have been shrouded in darkness. But all of a sudden we are hit with this bright patch which just doesn't fit well. So I'll tell Photoshop to adjust the color by increasing the value over here. 
so the darkness or the shadow of the mountain follows through the patch. Another big difference between the normal patch mode and the content aware patch mode is that in the normal patch mode we don't have the option to sample from multiple layers. So we are essentially bound to select the image layer or make a duplicate of the image layer, select that duplicate and then work on it. But with content aware, we have this sample all layers option. Of course, when it's unchecked, it acts like the normal patch mode where we have to select the image layer and then work on it. But let's check the sample all layers option. Then I'm going to create an empty layer and name it correction. I'm going to select this empty layer and then make a selection around this person. Now we made the selection on an empty layer, didn't we? Had it been on the normal patch mode, we wouldn't have been able to track the selection. So let's see if we can do that in the content aware patch mode with sample all layers turned on. Will it be really able to sample the pixels from the bottom layer and then drag the selection with it? So I'm going to take my patch tool, click and drag. And it does its job. We deselect with Ctrl plus D. And if we head over to the layers panel, we can see that the healed patch is on its own layer called correction. Next, we'll learn how to fade a patch in the normal patch mode. I'll select the image layer, make a selection over here and drag it on the window. Now with the selection still there, I'll have to go to edit and then fade patch selection. We get this dialog box. Here, I can fade the patch by reducing its opacity. You might be thinking that, well, if we had to reduce the opacity, we could have used the opacity slider over here. But when I go and do that, it targets the opacity of the whole image. Next, I'm going to walk you through these options. These are the common options that we see in any selection tools, but I'm going to show you anyway. With this option selected, we can start a new selection. If we want to add more to the selection, we click this and then add. And even if you're on this option and you want to go to this add option momentarily, you can press and hold shift on your keyboard and then add. So I'm going to click on the first option. Next, I'll press and hold shift on my keyboard. Then I'll add. And as you release the shift button, it goes back to the first option. Now, if you think this is too much and you want to subtract from the selection, you can select this option and then subtract. Like the previous example, you can be on any other option and toggle on to the subtract option temporarily by pressing and holding the Alt key on your keyboard. I'm just going to click on the first option, press and hold Alt on my keyboard, start subtracting. And then when I'm done, I'll release the Alt key. And you can see it has toggled back to the first option. Now last in line is this intersection option. And it creates a selection at the intersection of two selections. Now we already have this selection. And now if you overlap another selection, this common region will be our new selection. Another thing that I should have mentioned earlier is that for this selection, we have been using Ctrl plus D. But we can also just click outside the selection and the selection goes away. One more tip is that we can use any of the selection tools from here and then use the patch tool. For example, let's use the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to draw the selection on this tree. Now if I select the patch tool and want to get rid of the tree, I can do that. And then we deselect. Next, we'll learn how we can transform a patch. So we are going to make a selection around the snoot. Drag it onto the eye so we have an eye instead of the snoot. But suppose you want this eye to be bigger. With the selection still around, I'm going to press Ctrl plus D on my keyboard. And then I'm just going to scale. I can also rotate. Or if I right click, I can do any of these. Let's try distort. I can click on these points and then drag and distort as I please. When I'm done, I'll just click on this checkbox. And to deselect, Ctrl plus D. 
and this is all i have for today make sure to check the other videos i'll see you next time bye